Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. This is the must watch editing tips in Premiere Pro. I've got one at the end that I guarantee you've never even tried and didn't even know it was there. We all know Premiere Pro can be a very deep program and for a lot of new users, it takes quite a while for them to get up to speed to a lot of uh, tips that, that professional editors have been using for years. So I've got a, a bunch of these tips. These are the top things that are really, really easy to mix. The first one is, did you have any idea you can make a whole new sequence with a folder? Let's have a look. I've got a folder here full of uh, videos, a bunch of clips shot by my buddy Kurt Pear. And all I have to do is have an empty sequence over here on the right, take the whole folder, drag it over here, and boom. Now I've got all of that in there. Pretty easy. Uh, this is really great for B-roll when you've got a bunch of stuff you just want to throw in and trim out. Now, all of these clips come in at their full duration from the beginning to the end. What's an easy way to chop these up? With the Q key and the W key. This is ripple trim previous edit to playhead, ripple trim next edit to playhead. Q and W. So you just find the point where you want to trim. So if I want to trim at this point here, hit the Q key. And what that basically did was it took the whole top, moved it over there, it selected this area and deleted that. So if that's the way you're normally doing it, click, select, boom, delete. Q and W key, so you can easily go through and grab each one of these. So there's the Q, the W key is I want to end it here. So it's trimming the beginning and trimming the end. So trim the beginning, trim the end. And you could also do this with the, the um, by hitting play. So you can hit the space bar and play and do the exact same thing. Q, W, I think you get the idea. So let me just trim a few of these. Okay, so we dragged in a folder trim them up, we've got all, all our clips sitting here working great. Uh, what if you wanted to get rid of one of these clips? Well, that would be a ripple delete. And what you might be doing if you don't know this next tip is selecting something, hitting delete, then selecting the gap, then deleting the gap. Well, if you just select the gap, I'm holding shift and hitting the delete key on Windows. The delete key on Windows is also called the forward delete key on the Mac and hit that and it does a ripple delete. It's basically the same operation as right clicking and choosing ripple delete. You can go into the keyboard shortcuts, which are much better to see in the new version of Premiere Pro, but if you just type ripple, you'll see ripple delete and you'll see the keyboard shortcut in there. So ripple delete, you can do that all the time. In fact, I don't even have to get the mouse to click in here to select that. Wherever the playhead is, and the track targeting over here on the left, if I tap the D key, it's going to select it, shift, delete, boom, just like that. And if you hit the up and down arrow, you could find a clip, hit the D key, hit shift, delete, and get rid of it like that. All with the keyboard uh, without having to grab the mouse. Because if you're gonna do the operation to remove it with the keyboard, isn't it a lot easier to select it with the keyboard? So up and down arrow, hit the D key and delete it. The track targeting on the left is really important too. Um, you don't wanna make sure, you, you wanna make sure you're deleting the right clip. So uh, you have to select it over on the left hand side. If you've got extra footage, like a music track here, uh, so this is a music track here, and if I select this and try to ripple delete this, it's going to ripple delete that and keep this in place, no problem. If this is selected, so if this is a clip with both audio and video, and you ripple delete that, you'll get rid of both um, of those clips. If you have this selected, link selection, where you're only clicking on one and deselecting that, if I try to ripple delete this, I can't. I'm hitting the same keyboard shortcut. That's because this is part of that clip and you can't easily use the ripple delete on one piece and leave the other piece um, because 
it's part, you can't ripple something that's still there. Here's another one. This is important too if you've been editing something. And let's zoom into here. And I'm going to cut this with the razor blade. So I've got a cut between these two clips. And let's say that originally you had this over here and you had a different clip. Later on, you remove that clip, you join these back together and you realize, you know what, this is the same clip. I'm not missing any frames in here. I hate the fact that I've got an edit in here. I wish I could join this through edit, right click. Oh, look at that, join through edit. Boom, now it's one piece. Nice one, isn't it? Uh, you can thank the Final Cut uh, Pro users, the Final Cut Pro 7 users for something like that, because they asked Adobe to make that command similar to Final Cut Pro. All right, next one is selecting forward and background. I'm going to open up a special uh, sequence I've got for this. Let's say that I wanted to select all of these clips on this here, but I was zoomed in. I want to find an easy way to select every single clip on that track from where I'm selecting until the end of my sequence. And I don't want to have to zoom out, grab the mouse, select everything to make an operation. Well, on the left hand side, there's a track select forward and a track select backward tool. So if I click this track select forward, and you'll notice it has two lines to it, two arrows telling me that it's going to select everything forward, the, the uh, V1 track and V2. I just want V1. Hold the shift key down, it turns to one arrow, click on it, I've now selected all of these. What if I wanted them all to come down to here? Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows, arrow down, and they all pop down. And I know that this will happen through the whole timeline without me having to zoom out. Wanna check? Let's zoom out all of them are done. So select forward, select backwards, really makes sense when you, you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna to have to zoom all the way in and select all of that stuff. Okay, let's talk about finding a gap. Let's say that in your editing, you, you left one single frame of black in your sequence. You wanna to check to see if there are any gaps in there, but, but the, the the timeline is really complex. There's a lot of stuff down there. I'm going to move this right to the beginning. If you go to the sequence menu, there is a go to gap. Oh, look at this right here. Next in sequence, previous in sequence, next in track, previous in track. I've added these keyboard shortcuts. They're not there by default, but if I click, you notice how it takes me right to that gap. Oh, that can be so useful if you want to clean things up. Maybe you were playing the, the timeline and it's complex and, and you, was there a flash of black in there? Where was that gap? Oh, thank you very much. So that's a useful one and you can just add that, just drag that out and fix that up. Now, what about the next in sequence? Let's make this a little bit more um, complex by dragging in a bunch of other things on top of here. Okay, so let's imagine that we've got a bunch of other clips and we don't know where the gap is the next in sequence. So let's even drag some music in here. So we've got this and I'm gonna purposely put a gap in here in a track. If I choose sequence, go to gap, next in sequence, it's not going to move. That's a gap in a track, although the track is in a sequence, a sequence gap is a complete gap from all tracks. So I'm gonna make one of those and hey, this is worth noting too. I'm going to move my playhead just to an arbitrary position here, hit the I for in, O for out, and over here I can remove and extract these. These are two also useful keyboard shortcuts. This will extract it and leave a hole. This will close the hole. So I'm gonna click and leave a hole. Now watch, sequence, go to gap, next in sequence, it finds it in the sequence. So maybe this could be that one frame gap that you're having a problem with, but that's very useful. Next in sequence and previous in sequence have keyboard shortcuts. Next in track, previous in track don't, but as I showed you in the keyboard shortcuts, you can add it.
So I said that I was gonna show you one that I guarantee you've never tried. This next little hidden gem is beautiful for a rearrange edit. It allows you to move stuff around on the track very easily. I'll show you what I mean. I've got an edit here with music. And I've got a couple of clips here in the end, and I'm not really happy with the order of these. In fact, that one looks too much like, like that one. They're too similar. So I'm going to change the position of that. I'm going to put something else on the end. I've got this guy that I want to move over to that one. So this one should be there. And that one should be over there. Well, how would you normally do this? Well, a lot of people will take this and move it out of the way, take this, move it over here, move the edit over here, take this and place it down there. And then lock that in there. That's a lot of clicking. What's wrong with that? You want to show you the one tool way to do that? I'll show you. Let's undo all of that. So I want this guy over there and that guy over there. I'm holding Option, Command on Mac, Alt, Control on Windows. And you'll see I get a little tool show up. This is the Rearrange Edit. So as I click on this and move it, I'm going to move over to this clip here. And I've got Snap on, so it's snapping into here. And watch this. They will just flip. There's that one there, and there's that one there. I'll show you that again. Option, Command on Mac. Alt, Control on Windows, boom. You can also go backwards. So I could take this guy and move this rearrange edit over here. I can move this guy over here and it's going to move all of those clips around. If you just use the Command key by itself, the Control key on Windows, it will do the same thing, but it will rearrange the whole timeline. So it'll flip all of those around and it will cut a hole in it. So adding the Alt key on Windows, the Option key on Mac will solve that problem. How about that one? I'm sure you can use that, especially with B-roll. You're going to flip some around and move things around instead of constantly having to move all of those little pieces around. All right, hopefully you found this informative. If you're new to Video Reveal, please take a moment and subscribe. You want to take your support up a notch? Join us over on Patreon for as little as one single dollar a month. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking and editing efficiently and your best.